Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? <laughs> oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh yes, still vertical, still above the grass. <laughs> now, I have an exciting flight today. Are you ready for this? You know, over the past few weeks, I've been making some interesting flights. I had a flight in Canada. I've had several flights in the United States. Then I went down over to South Africa, beautiful area there. Then up to Bulgaria, where I flew across uh, Bulgaria to two points. And then down to Australia. Now I am back in Europe from Australia and we're going to fly across Sweden. And I've been invited to do this by a YouTuber whose channel is Axi. I think that's how it's pronounced. But I found out that his real name is August and he lives in Sweden and he says he is a keen plane spotter and aviation enthusiast. So August, yes, I am delighted to be able to make this flight today. And you know where we're going to go to, don't you? Of course, we're going to go between two very beautiful scenic places. We're starting out in a place called Orebro, and we're going to go down to Gothenburg Save Airport. These are two smaller airports that aren't used as much as the bigger airports, but they are very scenic and one of them is rather important. Oribro is a beautiful town with some lovely scenery, but you know the one thing that really stands out there is this castle. Look at this. Isn't this magnificent? Now, the airport isn't particularly big. It's not one of those big international airports, but it is very suitable for our needs today. And our destination is Gothenburg. No, not the Landwetter one, which of course is the one being used now, but the one they used to use before it they switched. He said they used to have commercial airlines such as Ryanair and Wizz Air going in and out of Save Airport. But as its runway is only 2,000 meters long, today they use the bigger Gothenburg Landwetter Airport. He also reports that one of the other big reasons for, the ma uh, for making the change is that the larger aircraft were damaging the taxiways because of the weight. But you know, Save is a lovely little airport with a big secret. Do you want me to, you want me to tell you what the secret is? It has an underground hangar that was used during the Cold War to park all kinds of jets and first responder type aircraft there. Today it's a museum. Here's a couple of pictures to show you what's inside it today. Look at the size of this hangar. And it's all underground under reinforced concrete. Now I found some excellent airport scenery for Orebro Airport and it's made by MBL Design and it's freeware. Freeware scenery. I like freeware scenery. But unfortunately, I couldn't find any airport scenery at all for Gothenburg Save Airport. 
so I'm going to have to use the default P3D scenery. Sorry, but that's all I got. <laughs> I did a check and there are no commercial flights between these two airports, so we are going to have to make our own flight plan. And in order to do that, August, we're going to have to go into pre-flight and check things out. So if you're ready, I'll see you in pre-flight. Well, August, here we are in windy.com. There was no reason to go to Flight Aware as there are no commercial flights between the two points. So I've gone straight to windy.com and here we are at Orebro Airport. And there you can see it right here in the center. You can also make out the outline right there of the runway. It's pretty clear where the wind is coming from. 210 degrees at 14 knots. It's a stiff breeze. Visibility is 10 kilometers or more, no clouds. Temperature is a very chilly 6 degrees. Q&H is a little on the low side. Look at this. 9 and 9 6 is the Q&H. So low pressure, that means we could get some rather interesting weather coming up. Who knows? Looking at the runway, as I said, we are going to be parked somewhere in this particular vicinity and then departure is going to be a crosswind takeoff on runway 19 in that direction. Now looking here at Gothenburg Save Airport and that's located here. Now the Gothenburg Landwetter Airport is located at this point. This though is the city airport as it is today. And it says the wind is 210 degrees, pretty stiff at 12 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, few clouds at 1200 feet. So there will be some visibility issues as we descend going into this airport. Q&H 998, but it's also VFR. Here's the runway. This is the runway that will be in use, and that's runway 19er, right there. And there is the terminal right here. So we have our basic information for the weather, VFR, so we should not be too bad at all. So let's go into Sim Brief and make our flight plan. Here we are, we're Ryanair 186 and we're departing from ESOE. E-S-O-E, and we're going to go to E-S-G-P, E-S-G-P. And there is the alternate. I don't recognize that straight away, but we'll find out in a moment. There's our airframe, cruise profile is six. There's our registration. It's saying that the scheduled flight time is one hour, five minutes. Departure 19, arriving on runway 19. We'll be full of passengers because we have, of course, the all important one ton of caviar, champagne, chocolates, and things like that. Sorts of <laughs> things that make it interesting. Now, this is the route that we've been given and there it is straight down down to Gothenburg oh and look how far we've got to go it's it's the Gardamon airport that's where we're the uh, 
alternate is should things go really pear-shaped that's a long way to go oh well right we will save the flight and generate the flight plan well here's our flight plan there's our starting point there is our destination alternate Gardamon Airport we are flying at 20,000 feet airtime is 37 minutes block fuel that we need to have loaded is five and a half tons there is our route we go direct to Lapsi take the November 866 to Negil and then direct into the airport planned optimum flight level it says so the making the best route for us here we are we're Ryanair 186 there's the flight level and here is the flight route here is Gardamon Airport as an alternate we're going to need to know cost index 6 we'll need to know the average wind I'm going to need to make sure that we have the block fuel of five and a half tons loaded on but right there are our reserves which of course are more than the trip and the taxi if everything stays the same this will be the flight route that I will post in the description box below this video looking now at the descent there's the descent information at well actually that's going to be also our cruise altitude as well and there's 150 which is 15,000 feet and here is 10,000 feet now we'll have a look and see what the weather is looking like well there are some significant weather areas around and we may or may not have some difficulties but it's holding stable for the moment and VFR and looking at the wind this is the wind that's closest to our flight route this is 180 we'll be flying at 20,000 feet and as you can see we're going to be having headwinds all the way well if we were departing on runway 19er and arriving on runway 19er that should tell you right away where the winds are going to be looking at our profile here we start out at Orebro Airport climb up here straight across to the top of descent and then straight down to Gothenburg Save here's the tropopause this line here we are going to be well below the tropopause today so it's not going to impact us at all right let's go on into navigraph charts and build our charts here we are over the area we're going to click on flight new flight from sim brief and bring in the latest flight plan i'm opening up the charts list we'll need the information for our departure and here it all is there's the tower frequency no eighties according to this and let's look at this and see if it uh, has any impact on us no it's not going to impact on us at all so our departure will be straight out and then straight into our flight route going now to the destination 
will need the information for the arrival. And there it is. Here are the stands at the arrival points. And there's only this one runway that's in use. And look, there's only this part that is usable. So it's a little on the short side. 3,560 feet. So we're either going to land and come to a full stop or we're going to be in problems. <laughs> we'll see what we have to do. On the approach, here's the information for the arrival. I'm going to pin this. It looks like it's going to come in right to here and then straight down to come in onto the runway that way. But this, of course, is an uh, RMP approach and we'll be making our approach as best we can. Pretty much following this, I suspect. I don't have, of course, any of these channels. So we'll have to use the information that you see here. We'll follow this as precise as we can. Coming into this point and then straight down to intercept the runway. So if we're coming in, runway 19er, 401. There it is. So that's our approach coming in. There's the initial approach fix. I'll just close this up. The initial approach fix right there. And then we come straight down here on this heading and we will make our landing on a very short runway. Right, let's go on into the cockpit and get things warmed up, shall we, August? I think we may need to get the heat going today. Ah, there you are, August. Come on in and take a seat. Buckle up and let's have a quick look at where we are here. We are at Orebro Airport. That's what the sign says right in front of us. And there's the waiting room for people to come and board aircraft. There's the tower right behind. I'm just going to take a quick shot of this because this is that freeware scenery that I found that was designed by MBL Design. And it really is quite, quite a good bit of scenery here. So here's looking at the left hand side. And of course the sun is in the wrong direction to illuminate the front. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? And there of course is the waiting room. You can see people waiting in there. Very detailed. And there... <clears throat> I'm not sure that's probably administration buildings, I would imagine, there. And more information is over there. Look at that. And of course, that is snow out there, so we are cold today. We are very cold, very cold. Yes, white stuff. There it is. So that's where we're at. And we are at stand three. Stand three. It's got it right there in front. And when we do get ready to depart, we'll start the engines in place and then swing around to go to... Do we swing to the right? Yes. We'll swing to the right and make ourselves a U-turn so that we can then exit and then we have to backtrack down the runway to get to the uh, threshold of uh, runway 19er. So that's what we have to do. And the weather, 
as you can see is overcast and cloudy and not the best of weather for taking a flight especially if we want to photograph a lot of it but we'll do all right okay well i've already been around and i've checked the tires kicked them and made sure we've got enough air in them i've even cleaned the windows look look how clean they are <laughs> So we're all set and ready to go. All right, first thing we do, turn on the battery and check that we have 26 volts because we need to run the pumps and start that auxiliary power unit that's in the tail of the aircraft. Wow, this is really quite something delightful looking trees out there, typical of course of Sweden. You know, for freeware scenery, I'm quite impressed, I really am. Quite impressed. All right, the low oil pressure light has come on and now gone off. The engine gas temperature to the rear power supply is now starting to descend and in a moment, this light will come on to indicate that we have 115 volts that we can tap into. And there it is. We are now running on 115 volts from the power supply at the back. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the IRS to get the GPS all aligned. Turn on the galley, you never know, we may get ourselves a hot cup of tea. Emergency exit lights, no smoking. Fasten seat belts. Then over here, we'll turn on the left and the right window heat. We'll turn on the probes because today is a cold day indeed. And then we'll turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps. The service hatch is open and the air stairs are down for passengers to mount up. Over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed and the circulating fans and listen. There's that rush of air coming in to warm up the cabin which is exactly what we need and then I'll turn on the steady light just so that anybody that's on the ground knows that we're in here and we are programming and getting things set up now the first thing that we need to do is we need to check the air rack and we've just got a new air rack that was downloaded so we are current and up to date and that the program is correct. I go into the initialization, and of course our start airport is ESOE, so ES and OE. We're at stand three, but I'm not sure if it's going to come up. It did, my goodness me. So we have the stand, so I'm gonna put that directly in. Now we're located on our sat-nav. Go to the route, and again, we need to put in the information. It's ESOE, ESOE. And we are going, of course, to ESGP. So ES and GP. We are Ryanair. And we're number 186. I go now to the next page. And on this we go direct to Lapse. That's L-A-P-S-I. And then we take the November 866. So November 866. And that will take us then to Negil. N-E-G and I-L.
And that is it. Activate, execute. Now I'm going to go to the fix. We need to get uh, some circles on our map for the destination, which is ESGP. ESGP. We need a four mile circle. We need a 10 mile circle. And we need a 30 mile circle. And now I'm going to go to descent, go to the forecast. The transition level is set by the ATC in Sweden, so I'm not going to change that. But I do need to put the information in for these three flight levels as they are going to be needed for the programming. Our Q&H at our destination is 996, so I put 996 in there. The direct speed and the direction of the winds aloft at flight level 200 is 230 at 74. 230 at 74. 74 knots. That is fast. And at 150, it is 234 at 60, 234 at 60 knots. We have some strong headwinds that we're bucking here. And then it is 229 at 44, 229 at 44 at 10,000 feet. And even that is 44 knots. So we have some strong winds that we're facing today. We're going to be departing from runway 19. Uh, put that in, there are no SIDs. Go back and we're going to be arriving on runway 19. And again, there is no SIDs and no stars. So now I go to legs. And here I'm going to put in some information for the for our destination. The initial fix coming in is GP401. I'm going to put that in. GP401. And there it is. And then I'm going to put in GP403, GP and 403, and go to next page, and then GP404, GP and 404, and that, bring that up to there, and execute. Now I'm going to go and have a look to see how this looks on the on the plan. So there's the first point of our destination of our trip is Lapsi, Noxam, Negil. There's the GP 401. There's the 403. There's the 404, and then it's down to runway 19. Right, we have a good plan. I'm going to put the weather radar on this and put the data on. Over on yours, August, I'm going to put in the terrain and the data. All right, everybody's loaded on, so I'll bring up the stairs and close the hatch. And I'm turning on the TCAS. Sounds like we have another aircraft in our vicinity. But I can't see where it is. Okay, now I've got that in. I'm going to go to the route, perform the initialization. 
Now we have 2,956 for reserves, 1,905 for trip and taxi, comes to 4,861 or 4.9. 4.9 is the nearest point. Reserves, 3. Put it into the correct one there. Double click that and then it will calculate everything for us. We have cost index 6. We are flying at flight level 200, 20,000 feet. The cruise wind that we that we have is 234 at 73. 234 at 73. That is stiff. The transition uh, altitude is 5,000 feet in Sweden. So I'll put that in, execute that. N1 limit, 6 degrees, take off Flaps 10, double click this and it will give us the trim and the center of gravity. One click on each of these <coughs> gives me B1 rotation and B2 liftoff speed. Okay, we are pretty much set to go now. I'm just going to click this to RTO the before start checklist. Fuel pumps are on, check windows, lock both, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are all out, MCP is not quite finished yet, so I need to put the information in on here. So we're going to go to 20,000 feet. Our departure is 188. So I'm going to spin this to 188. We need 188 degrees. Headings 188. And I'll do 188 degrees on yours as well. There we go. The Mach is 145. Got that. Up here I'm going to put 20,000 feet into our flight altitude and the airport altitude uh, the elevation at our destination is 59 feet, so I'm going to put 50 in for that. All right, now I've got this in here. I'm going to turn on the yaw damper and check the flight continuity light went out. Flight director on, and then we have a good plan. So I'm going to arm the throttle on that. There are no VORs to worry about so I'm not going to do anything with that. Okay, we're ready now to turn on the anti-collision light and I'm now going to start charts which will appear right about here. And there you can see where we are. And we're at this slight angle. So when we start, we'll just make a big circle and make our way then to the main taxiway and to the airport, to the runway, and then backtrack in order to get our start. So let's tune into the ground and ask for a departure to the south. Oliver, ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi, south departure. 
Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 1, minor, using taxiway alpha, runway 1, contact tower on 133.6 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 1, minor, via taxiway alpha, runway 1, Ryanair 186. Okay, we are now set to start. Everything is looking good. Right, adjust the seats. Have you got your seat adjusted? Oh, one thing that we can do before we uh, depart is I can set the decision height. Now this is the, this will give us the minimums warning when we get there and it is 658. So I'm going to spin this up to 658. And there we go, 658. And 99 and 6. Okay, got that done. Right, so which engine would you like to start first today? Left or right? It's up to you. You'd like to start the right engine? Good choice, why not? All right, then we turn off the air conditioning so that we can put the full juice into the engines to get them spinning. So now I'm going to switch on engine number two. The start valve has opened. The N2 is climbing up. In a moment, when this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel. It's coming up very nicely. 23 and 24. Bring in the fuel. Now I'm looking now for the engine gas temperature to rise. That means that we're getting a burn there. Now I'm going to look for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it has. We should start to hear the engines. There, there you go, we've got ignition, we've got a good engine start, it's climbing very nicely. Now I'm going to start engine number one, checking that we have 115 volts on engine number two, and now switching to engine one. The N2 is climbing, when this gets to 24 I'll introduce the fuel, and coming up. There it is, introducing the fuel. Now I'm going to look for the engine gas temperature to start to rise. There it is. It's coming up. I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. It just did. We're getting a good ignition. And I'm looking up here for 115 volts coming from engine number one. There, the engine's caught, and I've got 115 volts. Now I'm just looking for this tick mark to go out to say that we've got stable current running from the generators. And there it goes, it's balancing itself out. Good, it's gone out. Now I'm going to switch the generators from the APU now to the main engines. Turn on the air conditioning and well, heating again. Turn off the APU bleed. Turn off the APU. Next, I'm going to turn on the taxi lights. And I'm going to go to flaps 10. And I'm going to verify my takeoff speeds. And they're looking good. And the flaps are coming up. Good. We have that. Now we're ready now to check. Recall is checked. Flight controls are checked. Flaps, green lights. Stabilizer trim is set. Auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down and detent, ground equipment is clear. So we are ready now to taxi to the active. 
So we'll have to do a swing around and try not to crash into anything, shall we? <laughs> All right then, let's go. So, break off. A little bit of juice to get ourselves going here. And we're making our turn. And there it is. There's the entrance to the runway which we will take. When we get to the runway, I'll get to the whole short line and then I'm going to ask the tower for clearance to take off. It is actually such a short distance between there and here and we have plenty of runway. I'm going to ask for takeoff permission from here. How about that? You can see that runway tarmac here is all wet. This is really delightful scenery. And the wind suck is certainly blowing stiff, saying that this is the direction of the runway. All right, I'm going to request. Holabird Tower, Ryanair 186, Lydia's runway 1 minor departure to the south. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 1 minor, south departure approved. Cleared for takeoff, runway 1 minor. We are cleared for takeoff. So let me do the before takeoff and briefing is complete. Engine bleeds are on and start switches are on. Cabin is secure. Right, I'm going to position is on the strobe. Attendance, we are getting ready to take off. I am now starting the clock and give a little boost here and we'll just go straight out to the runway, swing to the left and make our departure. And there's plenty of ice on this runway, look at this.
departure, so we did well on that. We still had a couple of hundred feet to spare, which is always good. But now we're on our way down to Save. And it's going to be interesting to see how we land a fully loaded aeroplane full of passengers uh, on a uh, runway that is less than 4,000 feet. Do you think we can do it? I hope so. Otherwise, we'll end in a ditch. Anyway, go out and back into the main cabin, get some of that champagne and caviar, and I'll give you a shout as soon as we are on our descent and approach to Salve, okay? See you in a few minutes. going to have 
to be set up ready for landing because we won't it'll be happening so fast we won't get much chance for anything else okay I'm gonna see if I can contact the tower let's see yes visibility 
we're going to have a very short runway. <laughs> My goodness me. All right, all lights are going on. Attendance. Oh, and we now have sleet and snow. Did you arrange this, August? My gracious. And look at all the weather cells that we have in the vicinity. Well, we're just coming up on 2,300 feet, which is the altitude we need at GP401. Over there, I, I have, I've set it up so that the glide slope going down will show on that one, and then we're going to try to follow that all the way down, whether we can see outside or not. And we do have some rough weather out there. It is bouncy. We will have a crosswind landing with rough weather, low visibility, snow and ice. Oh my gracious me. Oh well, we'll do the best we can. Ryanair 186 always tries to do that. altitude 
in case of a missed approach. Engines are looking good, pressure is good, looks good across the board. I definitely have a strong crosswind. Still do not yet have sight of the runway. Ah, oh, I can just see the runway ahead. We are two white and two red. We have the runway in sight. Since, oh, and it is a strong crosswind. I have control. <laughs> well, here we go. One thousand. One thousand. Check. We're not going to have an awful lot of runway. But we're coming down nicely. I have Auto brake sets of four. We're on course. We're on course. Approaching minimums. Caution, terrain. Minimums. Minimums. We are Caution, committed. Terrain. Yeah. Not much I can do about Caution, the terrain. terrain. Four hundred. Four hundred, check. And we're on course. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. 30, 20, 10. And reverse thrusters are on. Full brake. And there's ice. And we'll turn off here. Okay. And we'll stop at this point. All right, do the cleanup. And finest but I did manage to land and come to a stop before we ran off the other end ah and that's always a good idea isn't it okay and flaps are now up okay we'll go up here and find a place to park this, by the way, is P3D's own scenery for this airport, which is rather good. I'm going to have to be careful to stay on this taxiway because it is a little narrow. This is interesting scenery for P3D. This 
really quite good. I have no idea if uh, Save Airport is like this at all. I've never been into this one, so I do not know. But we'll go up here and find ourselves a place to park in front of the what looks like the main terminal building over there on the left. Apron 1 is what the chart is referring to this. And it was icy on that runway. Definitely was interesting for landing. All right, I'll turn here and Then over there somewhere, I think, is the uh, is where they park. So we just have to find a spot, I suppose. And it is pouring down here. It is sleet coming down. Outside air temperature is a mere two degrees. All right, we'll pull right in here. are down, the hatch is opened, clean up here is complete, APU is off, battery is off, and shutdown is complete. Well August, what did you think? That was a short runway, wasn't it? Oh dear, did you know it was going to be that short when you asked me to do it? I didn't realize it would be that short, but when you land right at the threshold, you can give yourself as much of the runway as you possibly can. It's cheating, but it's one way to do it. And we managed to come to a stop before the end of the runway, and despite the ice on the runway, I didn't run off. So I'm pretty pleased with myself at that I shall be insufferable now for the rest of the day <laughs> thank you thank you for the challenge and for the invitation I hope it lived up to your expectation and I shall see you all again on a flight with Ryanair 186 bye everybody